What's going on? I hope you're doing great. I'm Justin Voss, and ever since I first learned about rocket stoves not too long ago, I liked the idea that you could just go around and pick up a few sticks and cook an entire meal. I love grilling, so anything with fire and food works well for me. But honestly, I haven't gotten a ton of use out of this because it's a little big, and I just kind of heavy. It's not easy to move around or throw into your car or anything like that. But then someone sent me a picture of a rocket stove integrated into a 50 cal ammo can just like this one so i thought i have to do that you know i'm not one to directly try to copy something but i'm going to try and put my own little spin on it it is a tight little package to get all this into here but uh the goal is you'll be able to shut the lid just like this no external holes it'll keep it water tight ammo cans have a gasket around the lid and yeah that's what we're going to do in this video This video is brought to you by Empire Abrasives. More about them later. So just going over a basic rocket stove and how they work real quick. Typically you have some kind of a fuel tube or a place to put in whatever you're gonna be burning. Uh, you have your burn chamber. And then on this rocket stove's case, you have your air inlet here in the back. Sometimes that'll be right under the fuel tube or somewhere down here. And then the heat rises up the chimney here and you can put whatever you wanna cook up here. To do the same thing with this ammo box, I'm a little undecided on exactly how this is gonna go down. I've looked up a couple of these online. If you wanna purchase one of these ready to rock, you can find those online if you just Google it. But uh, for this one, I think I'm gonna do something like this, four by four piece of square tubing. That's just a little over 101 millimeters on the width, something like that. We'll have to cut it open somehow to allow room to feed in and then this will be the actual burn chamber. And then for the chimney, I have some three inch tubing. That's just a little over 76 millimeters wide. That'll go something like this. Obviously this all has to be cut to actually fit in here. And then I have some sheet metal here. Uh, this is, I think it's 063. I think that's 1.6 millimeters. And that'll be used to fill in any space we need and enclose the actual insulation. And then this is actually gonna be insulated like I mentioned. So I have some ceramic fiber insulation. I found this on Amazon. This is half inch thick, as well as I got this ammo can on Amazon. This is just a standard 50 cal ammo can. It's kind of the most common, I think. Uh, I'll leave a link to both of these down below. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how the feed is going to be and how we're gonna get air into the burn chamber. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, there's our main frame that the whole rocket stove is gonna be based out of. It's gonna drop right down in the rocket stove like this, sit about a half inch off the bottom, I'm gonna put a little insulation in it, and the chimney will be here, and the sticks can come in through here or whatever you're gonna use for fuel. Before I cap the sides on this, I had an idea to put some kind of a false floor in here to allow air to travel underneath, kind of preheat on its way, and then come up through a grate under the fire. I was worried that it would fill up with ashes and you wouldn't be able to clean it out if the floor was welded in there. So I came up with this idea to use this quarter inch solid bar that's 6.4 millimeters thickness and make a rail on each side. 
That way the false floor could drop down in and be easily removed whenever. I wanted to make it decently substantial. The only thing I had eighth inch was these coupons, so I'm gonna have to weld them together to make it large enough. And then I'm gonna stick some expanded metal on the end and that'll be the gray area for the air to pass up through. So next I'm going to weld the rail in, build the floor and cap the ends. I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out. It's probably going better than I thought it would. Um, I think I'm ready to start positioning it inside the actual ammo can. I know I need a gap all the way around to allow room for ceramic insulation. So I'm going to weld sheet metal all the way around the top and then actually to the ammo can and that's what will hold it in there and hold all that insulation down in where it's supposed to be. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna have to get rid of the paint in here. And to get that off, it actually brings me to this video sponsor, which is Empire Abrasives. To get the paint out of this can, I'm gonna use this three inch medium surface conditioning disc. This is a Rolock type. 
I also have a bit of a coarser one. These also work great if you've done some regular grinding with some discs like these on any kind of material and need to get the scratches out. These work great for that. They can smooth metal down nicely. Um, then I've also been using on this project these flap discs. A brand new one of these will chew away some uh, mill scale. And then of course, my favorite cutoff wheel. Been using the same one on this entire project. And last but not least for this particular project, been using this 3 8 uh, belt on my little handheld belt sander. It's one of my favorite tools in the shop. Super convenient. It's something you didn't know you need until you had one. But uh, they obviously make all different kinds of abrasives. They make them for big grinders. I just happen to be using these uh, littler ones. They make them for big belt sanders, all different kinds. Uh, you can check out everything they have to offer by using the link down below. That also lets them know that you heard about them here, which helps. Uh, I don't get any kickback from that. It just kind of lets them know. And uh, if you've never ordered from Empire Braces before, you can use promo code VOSS at checkout and you'll actually get 10% off your first order. But yeah, use the link down below. Check out everything they have to offer. Super easy to find what you need on their website and fast shipping. And thanks again to Empire Abrasives for supporting the channel. Okay, so I misspoke earlier when I said this was a quarter inch thick. It's actually three eighths of an inch thick. So it's a little over nine millimeters. So if you were following along exactly and you've already ordered your material, I'm, I'm sorry, my bad, my bad. I could not find anything around the shop half inch thick, but since these are three eighths and this is an eighth, I can lay this on top of here and use this as a spacer to get this positioned in there. So this combined is a half inch thick, which is 12.7 millimeters. That's how high we're gonna be holding it up off the floor. These are just temporary, they're not staying in here. There's actually a few things I wanna do before I weld it into the can. I wanna get the short shoot cut and tacked on, and then some kind of a lid mechanism on here. That way I'm not having to weld down in here uh, unnecessarily. I want to put some kind of door here. The idea is then that way you can kind of regulate how much air it's pulling from right here and the fire potentially spreading out. And then with our floor, if you shut this down, maybe it'll keep the fire in the back where it's pulling air from underneath.
Okay, I just noticed I have a problem with my door design. Um, it's not that I put it under the hinge. I did that because it gets the door more flush here and less of a gap for it being so high. But the problem is you can't remove this pin once it's in the box because the hinge is too wide and the pin won't get out. So the door has to stay on. But for storage, the top of this needs to fit down into here. So this needs to swing up out of the way, but it's too tall to close the lid like that. So the max length of the door cannot be any longer than what would reach the top of this. So I'm gonna have to cut the door shorter and then I'll probably make it till it falls like that. All right, I think I'm actually ready to drop the rocket stove into the ammo can. Uh, the plan right now is to use the same spacers as before to make sure we're a half inch off the bottom. And then I'm just gonna mark around the edge, pull it out, pull the spacers out, and then take some of the ceramic insulation, which I haven't opened yet because it has a respiratory warning on it. So I'm gonna make sure I put a mask on for that. Drop it in the bottom, set the rocket stove back on top of it, and then get little pieces of steel and kind of tack those in on each of the four corners to hold it where it needs to be. That way I can position it and get it all locked in. And then drop in the rest of the insulation around the side and come back in and cap it all off with sheet metal. Okay, as I'm working this through in real time, I think it's gonna be easier to weld on all my little supports out here on the table and then trim them if I need to and drop it down in there and then tack them to the case. When I actually start welding to the box, I have this chunk of aluminum. It's all dirty and nasty, but that doesn't matter. I have just had it laying around. And uh, I'm gonna clamp it to the side and then on the opposite side, clamp this, and that'll hopefully keep it square. And this will use a heat sink, and I'll move it around to wherever I'm welding. Won't work that well on the ends, but it, on this long sides, hopefully this will help.
All right, here's my plan. I'm just going to tack it along the edge like this the best I can. I'm using the 045 wire, uh, stainless wire, just because, and that's 1.14 millimeters. Uh, just to leave as much heat out of it as I can, potentially. Got my heat sink clamped up to wherever I'm gonna weld, and I gotta go all the way around this thing, so it's gonna be interesting. There, it's finally welded all the way around. That's probably the most difficult part of this build, honestly. So when I welded the ends, there's all this stuff on here and it didn't really seem like it needed the heat sink. It welded fine, it's coming through a little bit. Well, if you really wanted this perfect, you'd have to do some kind of sanding or filler, I don't know. I forgot to put the aluminum heat sink on this side when I started and I put it on later, but I feel like it was a little too late and you can see it warp so I have an idea to try and fix that I don't know if it's gonna work but other than that I feel like it looks pretty good only thing left to build other than fix this edge is build the top section that's gonna slide onto here and raise the chimney up and then it's gonna store down in here so I'm gonna do that now uh, after I try and work on this a little bit and this is sealed pretty much all the way around except for right behind the hinge so I never had a problem with the welds blowing out while it was welding and building up heat. I don't know if that'll be an advantage or a disadvantage for the actual functioning of the stove. There's nothing I can do about it though because it's such a tight area back there. So there is a tiny little bit of an air release back behind the hinge that you can't see, but it's there. Whenever I get this close to finishing a project, I'm just like, ah, so close. But then I think about everything I have to do. I gotta build the top yet, gotta clean it up, gotta paint it. Um, today's currently Saturday. It rarely ever takes me one day to build something. This is pretty much taking me spaced out all week. Gotta go to the racetrack tomorrow early in the morning, but I'm determined to get this done. And that actually fits really flat so that's good this is going to be the extension it's not going to be this high it needs to fit down in here for storage with the floor in place so i want it to be as tall as possible I kind of forgot about having to have something to hold it and secure it in here. So that raises this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna take it over, cut off maybe about another quarter of an inch or six or seven millimeters, just to give more room for the grate.
there it is. Completed ammo can rocket stove. Uh, I gotta say, this is probably one of my favorite projects I've done so far. I cannot wait to see it in action. Don't worry, I will include all of that at the end of this video. Um, I'm also planning on having plans for this on defiantmetal.com and they will be available for free for channel members. So I'll leave a link for them in the community tab. If you're a channel member, be sure to head on over there and you can download these plans for free. Otherwise, for everybody else, they will be on defiantmetal.com soon. And uh, if you don't have exact tools that I used in this video, like don't worry about it. Sometimes you might have to just come up with some creative way or an alternative way to do something. It might take a little bit more time, but there's plenty of tools out there that I don't have that would have saved me a ton of time on this. So it's just all about coming up with a creative alternative way of doing something sometimes. But speaking of tools, thank you again to Empire Abrasives for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click the link down below to check them out. Everything I used in this video was from them. Everything performs great. And uh, if you've never ordered from them before, you can use that promo code VOSS at checkout and receive that extra 10% off. So if you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And I'm going to go try this thing out. So I'll see you guys in the next one.